Chapter 2, A Door Opens. The newspaper ad caught the attention of many women. It read, reduce your household duties. Women who are not afraid to roll up their sleeves and do jobs previously filled by men should call the Langley Memorial Aeronautical Laboratory. A few years earlier, an ad like this would have been unthinkable. Most employers never would have considered a woman for a job that had always been performed by a man. But in the spring of 1943, with World War II in full swing and many men off serving the military, the country needed all the help it could get. Employers were beginning to hire women to do jobs that had once belonged only to men. This particular ad was placed by the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, the NACA, a government agency dedicated to studying the science of flying. The NACA shared a campus with the U.S. Army Air Corps in Hampton, Virginia, a city in the southeastern part of the state near the Chesapeake Bay. The NACA's mission was important and unique to help the United States develop the most powerful and efficient airplanes in the world. Airplanes moved military troops, tracked enemies, and launched bombs. World leaders felt that the country that ruled the skies would win the war. President Franklin D. Roosevelt believed in the importance of air power. So two years earlier, in 1941, he had challenged the nation to increase its production of airplanes to 50,000 units a year. At that time, the industry had manufactured only 3,000 planes a year. The NACA and private industry were up for the challenge. By 1943, the American aircraft industry was the largest, most productive, and most sophisticated in the world, making three times more planes than the Germans, who were fighting on the other side of the war. Victory through air power. Before manufacturers built the planes, airplanes, the designs were developed, tested, and refined at the Langley Memorial Aeronautical Laboratory, which was where the NACA had first begun its operations in 1917. The engineers created wind tunnels to stimulate or imitate different conditions a plane could encounter when flying. This helped the engineers to test airplane parts as well as the whole aircraft examining them for many problems like air disturbances or even wing geometry. After that testing, pilots flew the planes, trying to assess how the machines handled in the air. Did the aircraft roll unexpectedly? Did it, in, did it stall? Was it hard to guide or maneuver? Making small challenges to the design added up to a difference in performance. Even tiny improvements in speed and efficiency multiplied over millions of pilots' miles added to the difference that could tip the balance of the war. People working at Langley knew that they were doing their part to win the war. Victory through air power, said Henry Reed, the engineer in charge of the Langley Laboratory, and the workers took their mission to heart. Wanted, female mathematicians. Each of the engineers at the Langley Memorial Aeronautical laboratory required the support of a number of other workers, craftsmen to build the airplane models, mechanics to maintain the test tunnels, and number crunchers to process the data was collected during the test. For the engineers, a plane was basically a complex physics experiment. Physics is the science of matter, energy, and motion. Physics meant math and math meant mathematicians. At the Langley Laboratory, mathematicians meant women. Female mathematicians had been on the job at Langley since 1935, and it didn't take long for the women to show that they were just as good or even better at computing than many of the male engineers. But few of the women were granted the title of mathematician, which would have put them on equal footing with some male employees. Instead, they were classified as subprofessionals a title that meant that they could be paid less. At Langley, the female mathematicians were called computers. They did the com computations to turn the results of the raw data gathered by the engineers into a more useful form. Today we think of computers as machines, 
but in the 1940s, a computer was just someone whose job it was to do computations, a flesh and blood woman who was very good with numbers. In 1943, it was difficult for the Langley Laboratory to find as many qualified women as they needed. A recruiter from the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics visited colleges in search of women, young women, with analytical or mathematical skills.